No, I do not want to do a system update while I've got a game uh, going. Uh, let's go with Team Sky Pirate for this. In a game where I have been able to fit most dungeons into a single 30 to sometimes 40 minute video, we're at like what, part 4 of the Pharos now? I mean, I'm not really complaining, because sometimes long dungeons, especially this late into the game, can be can be good in RPGs, and I do like that this dungeon actually tries to, like, give you some gimmicks as well. Uh, it's got bravery. That could be a bit of a problem. No, we're definitely Team Sky Pirate, because we've got Redis here too. Um, hi there, big spewing sand cloud. But, um, yeah, at the same time, I see why people consider the Pharos to be that one level. And also, um, yeah, there's an even worse part of this place, um, in the basement, which we won't get access to until, um, later. So, um, we don't have haste anymore, so I need to be aware of that. Wow, Balthier's meter is just charging so much slower without haste. Maybe I should actually switch him over to, I mean, I like the, the aqua shot for those, um, those headless enemies, but at the same time, I'm gonna try save the queen, because even though that's a two-handed sword, which are traditionally quite slow weapons to use, it's still faster than guns, because guns, I think, are the slowest regular weapon type in this game. Oh yeah, Varn has the Ring of Renewal, so he's, he's healing. Also, we are in, I believe, yes, we're in the Station of Ascension now, and that means there's a rare game that has a 40% chance of spawning here, and it's a Hunt Club rare game too. Probably should have gone back and forth at the start of the stairs to spawn that. I need to look up if it has any particular conditions, or if it's just like a 40% chance in general. Oh, it, it has a 40% chance of spawning at the bottom of the stairs that lead to the next area. At least what I presume is the next area, because it's called the Reach of the Damned, and I don't think we've been through an area called Reach of the Damned yet. You know, we are fighting most of the same stuff we did in the last area, but Sloga is an extreme pain. At least it only seems to have hit Fran so far. Problem with this party is Fran is not exactly the best healer. Uh, yes, it was the Earth uh, Ninja Sword that I got licensed for with Vaughn. I gave up the water one. So I could see how much the Korga Blade does, even though it's not as good as the Masamune. Am I really only doing that much with the Wii? I know that you're pro you've got Protect up, but... I'm doing like... Like... 12 to 1300 with weakness. And at the same time, Masamune's damage is partially magical, so, um. Okay, it is doing a little less, but with, considering how insane elemental weaknesses tend to get in this game, that's very disappointing. It's only like a couple of hundred less. Necrofiend. Yet another thing in here that's weak to holy. Again, your Curia are not doing a very good job of selling themselves because <laughs> everything in here is like dark and unholy based. <laughs> Necrofiend sounds like a, um, it either sounds like a pretty cool enemy type or, um, something that's like a, an, an, a, an, an edgy teenager would come up with. Actually, now I think about it, Necrofiend sounds like the name of a band. <laughs> I can just, I can seriously picture that. Necrofiend, live. Um, okay then, uh, I want to see what this dragon male does, though. That's a very big increase of strength on what Balthier, well, what Balthier previously had was not boosting strength, though. And, uh, Barsh only gains a little bit of strength from that, so I think I'm gonna go and give it to Balthier, even though his strength doesn't influence his guns. Does certainly influence his greatsword damage. And I'm cheating again! Uh, yeah. It just, it's still kind of funny, the way they, the way they set this up, it's just like, oh, hey, yeah, give up your, um, your mini-map. But just the mini-map, not any other map, only the mini-map in the top uh, right-hand corner of the screen. But, um, being honest, I never really paid much attention to anyway. <laughs> so, it's just kind of, uh It's just weird. I don't know, I don't know why they just give you... I mean, admittedly, the whole, you know, knowledge, it's a bit vague on what it actually entails, so... Maybe they were just expecting that players wouldn't realise it was, um, the objectively best choice until it was too late. Uh, let's actually... Okay. I'm gonna try, uh, an experiment here. I'm gonna dispel that. 
and then see if the um if the Corga Blade does more. Okay, it's doing quite a lot more, uh, thanks to the elimination of that protect status. A lot more, especially at full health, so maybe we should be dispelling these protects more often. In fact, maybe I should set that as a gambit for Fran right now. She's dispelling reflect, but not protect. And considering that Fran is the red mage, maybe I should be focusing a bit more on, um making the best use of all of the spells that she has, because that's the real, you know, thing that red mages have going for them. They don't get the best spells, but they get a much better variety of spells. In fact, red mages are basically how everyone played in the original, um, um, in the original PS2 version, as I said at the very start of this playthrough. High potion. I mean, I suppose while we're going through areas that are very similar looking to what we've been through before, and also have, um, very similar, um, enemies to what we've been fighting before, and the fact that this is sort of essentially the final dungeon, except not really. Maybe I should talk a little bit about my, I mean, I don't know if it's a little early for my overall thoughts on this entire project. Oh, now it makes sense why the doors don't open from this side, because otherwise you just get straight to the stairs. In fact, I think those are the only stairs on this floor. But yeah, this project has been has been interesting. It's been fun going back to a game that I, I played when I was younger, and I um, haven't really played for ages, and I haven't experienced in this uh, Zodiac version. And I've got to say, Zodiac definitely improves in a lot of ways. The speed up button in particular is, is really great. That sash is another fixed chest. Requires an oddly high amount of, um, uh, of accessory licenses, though. Hmm. And, like, this lady in, I mean, I suppose I can kind of see the point of people saying the game plays itself with gambits, but I do like the control you have over AI. There's a lot of really interesting setups you can do with gambits. I'm probably just doing more basic things that just get me by the early areas, but you, you can do some probably much more creative things than I've done. Zombie Warlock, okay, looks like we actually haven't fought all of the enemies in these areas. Never seen that one before. You there just have haste and bravery. Yeah, I am doing a lot more. It's also interesting, like, with the battle system, seeing just all of the things that make a difference to damage. In particular, these effects that are, like, good depending on, um, your, um, like, HP threshold, they actually have, um, a lot of influence on, on gameplay in particular. Like, elemental weaknesses are a huge deal, and you've seen just how much, um, I'm doing with weaknesses, um, with, you know without protect on enemies as opposed to with protect on them. So there's actually a lot that you have to think about. Like, people think this game might seem mindless, but there's there's still a lot more sort of thinking that goes on. It's often in the preparation and also in the sort of during battle and changing strategy on the fly. For example, I still love the fact that you can switch up equipment in the middle of a fight. Like, one of the few other RPGs I've known that lets you do that is uh, Dragon Quest, uh, like some of them, but they require you to put the items in the character's specific inventory, because uh, every character has, like, their own independent item bag in a lot of those games. Which is something that actually got me, um, a little bit turned off of, um, Dragon Quest, um, 8 when I was first playing it. But overall, I actually think this game does a pretty good job of translating the kind of classic Final Fantasy style to 3D uh, in maybe even a better way than FF10 did, because FF10 didn't really have like a ton of exploration between different areas. The areas were very linear, and while the it had a great turn-based battle system, I love 10's battle system, I like its characters and story, but I, I like the world exploration mechanics of 12 a lot more. I like how there are optional areas. I like how you have a bit of freedom in how you get to certain places. Like, for example, you actually can, I think, get as far as... Well, no, you can't get as far as the Fon Coast because of the Moogle quest, but you can get as far as, like, the Salika Wood before you're even required to go to Arcades. Oh, I see a bigger one. Yep, that's the Avenger! It's assembled with a bunch of smaller things. And I want to take out the smaller things first. Because they could easily become a problem when dealing with something as big and dangerous as the, um, that Avenger. It's got Protect as well, but Fran should be getting rid of these Protects one by one. Don't know if the Avenger is even weak to Earth. I'm guessing it's probably not, because it's not taking much damage. 
I also like how, like, okay, one of my favorite things about FF12 is the Espers. I just think the Espers are just so cool. I love how you don't get very many of them in the main story, and a lot of them are obtained, like, you have to actively go out of your way to find them in the world, often in optional areas, and defeat them in boss fights. And I also, in that regard, I like that Zodiac Age buffed them. People have said that, oh, you know, um, uh, Zeromus is kind of broken from the looks of it. I mean, I can see why people would think Zeromus was kind of broken with that setup. Oh, great. Oh, Ardor too. That's not good. Yes, we're seeing this. That, uh, extremely hurt. Uh... Bolthea, stop targeting someone, please. Bolthea? Oh, he's still Phoenix Downing. Um, you're immune to physical attacks, but do I have any, like, arcane magics that... Oh, she has, like, no MP. That's why she's sucking here. Sorry that I'm, um... Uh... Ah, Elixir Syndrome. We're at pretty much the end of the game. I can probably afford to blow one Elixir. Oh great, there's Ardor again. Ah, oh, she's stuck raising. Oh no, no, not renew, not renew! That's a full heal. This is definitely one of the tougher rare games that we've fought. Now if I bring Ash in or oh, I don't know if I can get a quickening chain in before it renews. So you do have options in combat. I kind of forgot about quickenings for a second. Oh, it's going off! Ah! If I remembered quickenings earlier. I wouldn't have had to deal with that. Okay, I will say there's one thing that I wish Zodiac Age did. I wish they let you shorten, speed up, or skip individual quickening animations. Because quickenings go on for a very, very, very long time. In a game where battles are usually very quick, even boss fights. So, that is one weakness, I feel. I mean, these animations all look cool the first time you see them, but having to sit through them every single time, like the speed up button doesn't work here, I'm trying it, but you do a quickening chain, it does get kind of annoying. Although, speaking of the animations, I will say, Whip Kick is probably my favourite quickening animation in the game. It's just kind of a cool concept, and, um, this is, uh, ice, right? Not holy. Yeah, it's ice. Something I can imagine being a super move in a fighting game. Oh, my... Oh, bleah. I am a... I am a dumb. I am a dumb person. Because you're immune to physical damage now, which actually blocks quickenings. Oh, Bolfi is down. Uh, I was gonna actually summon, um, I was gonna try... Well, Redis is doing a rise. I was gonna try and, uh, summon, um... I keep thinking someone's in Technics. I don't know why, I just keep thinking it's in Technics. Um, but, okay. This thing does hit hard enough that Bolfia might go down before Exodus does anything. I hope that Exodus is not blocked by, um... By the paling. Doesn't seem to be. And it seems like this guy's going for Exodus too. Got a low roll in that first Comet. That was a far better roll though. The damage of Comet definitely evens out. And this is actually what I was talking about like earlier. I really, really, uh, Bolthia is gonna, oh, just barely survive that. Hmm. I want Exodus to keep attacking him and have Bolthia heal himself. Exodus could use Curaja, but, um, yep, I really want Exodus to do this. I mean, yeah, Exodus is way better than I expected him to be, which is really cool. And now he's, um, <laughs> well, I mean, he's healing, oh, actually, no, he's healing both of us, because Curaja is an area attack. Wow, he had to actually use Curaja twice on himself. <laughs> he has that much HP thanks to my bubble. I I like that Zodiac buffed Espers, is what I was trying to say. Because I know that some of them can be kind of broken, but I would rather have them be somewhat broken than have them be as horrendously bad as they were in the vanilla uh, PS2 version. Like, Espers were just not worth it in that version for the most part. 
ignorant child, blessed, blessed with life on clay below. All that lived and ever shall are as nothing before the undying. And wow, the undying are complete. <laughs> yeah, um, they they are complete complete asses. I can I can understand why Venar is is rebelling against them. Uh, but at the same time, Vayne is just is um destroying entire countries just to just to get the means to potentially fight back against the Acuria. So hopefully we can find some kind of third way to screw them over without screwing over humanity at the same time. Now I believe there should be another boss coming up and I wonder if Exodus is going to persist into that fight if I keep going. He does still have a lot of his meter left. Ignorant child, crawling through life on clay below, all that lived and ever shall, by Guru Vagan's grace to prosper now and for- okay, mentioning Guru Vagan, interesting. So, yeah, we don't know if Guru Vagan was like the civil- like if the Okuria were actually a civilization in the world before humanity, or if- they were always gods and um, they built some um, Guru Vagan themselves at some points. Another thing I really like about FF12 is the world building. Ivalice, especially like in the Elmer Talk of the Monster Manual, the Bestiary, there's a lot of really great um, lore in there about the different enemies and just like even just the random musings and like there's even justification for why certain loot lets you get certain items at the bazaar. It's just. It's, it's a really, like, overall, it's one of my favourite worlds in FF, and, and according to some people in the comments, it's actually been referenced quite a few times in uh, Final Fantasy XIV. In fact, apparently, FF XIV actually put um, the Pharos into one of their, um, one of their raids. Muramasa. I was talking about that when we got the Masamune. Element 9. It's basically just the Masamune, but worse, I think. Which is actually not that worth it at all since I actually have the Masamune, which I'm real. I am, like, I'll just stress this, I am really not supposed to have the Masamune at this point. You're supposed to get it after you fight the Ancient Man of Mystery. Ahead the Watcher waits, third of three, ye who grave wealth, return whence you came. Well then, um, that's never stopped Balthi before and it certainly won't stop him now. So we have another boss here, and I'm really hoping that I can carry Exodus into this fight a little bit, because I am really liking Exodus so far. I've seen this thing before. This thing looks really cool. It's like a snow leopard uh, behemoth. Does Exodus still have bubble? I wonder how I can check that. Well, I mean, if I can, if I point my attack at. Haste, Faith, Libra. Nope, he does not have Bubble. Man, I used to know who Euclid was via Murderous Maths, and I've kind of forgotten now. Okay, we have Bubble... He, okay, Exodus got hit by something. Let's go back to save the Queen for variety. No oh, ice break. Uh, basically, Balthier just needs to not die, because Exodus is going to be doing the brunt of... Not brunt. It's like bearing the brunt of something. Going to be doing the most damage uh, here. He's certainly drawing a lot of what this game's mechanics call enmity. Okay, Balthia needs to heal. He needs to heal big time. Don't think a high potion's gonna be enough. Nope, that ice break may actually kill me. In fact, like, this may be too late. I can try. Okay, nope, just barely survived. Well, not barely. I survived that by a decent amount. I'm so sorry, party, that I didn't give you a chance to have fun against this, but I... I mean, it makes sense since Exodus is my star sign. People think that X-Death in FF5 was probably supposed to be called Exodus, maybe? But the katakana does say Exodesu, which is more like it would actually be X-Death, not Exodus. Oh, there's a chest in here. I don't know if we can even get that now, because these seem to be one-time illusion areas. <laughs> it makes sense that Balthi would utterly humiliate the Guardian who told people who, fa who favor wealth to go away. <laughs> Balthi is just like, you think that stopped any Sky Pirate before? Let me show you how it's done. So yeah, I am really enjoying Exodus. 
One of the rare instances of like normally random damage, like as you've seen with Zalera's, I don't know why they changed Zalera's uh, ultimate attack from. Like, I don't think the Esper Super Moves have official names in this version. They're not called like Quickenings or. I think they were called Esper Technics in some of the manuals, which is a bit. I don't know, like. Sounds kind of, um. annoyingly mundane. Threshold of Sacrifice. Does this mean we get our Sacrifice thing back? Probably does. Yeah, everything's a little bit blurry and Exodus's time has almost run out. I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss you. You did well though. You did very, very well. I'm I'm impressed. You've Oh, I, I was about to say that you've been like the best of all the Espers that I've used in this playthrough, and then I was like, oh right, uh, obviously. <laughs> um uh Zeromus. Let's not touch the Altar of Wealth. I don't want to accidentally end up giving up items in addition to what I've already given up. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, I haven't saved since that boss fight, and this thing's probably going to be even more of a threat than that thing ever was. Um, I didn't realize there'd be one here. Uh, Ash, dispel, please. Please, please dispel that. Although, if you're almost called you a water type. I mean, that's what you are, but you probably have resist gun slash measures. But I do have worm fire shot. Let's see how much worm fire shot does. Yeah, that didn't look like it did anything. Stop taunting me with water spells that I can't use. Oh no, now you're immune to magic. Um... Uh... uh Hmm. Uh... I... Speaking of Exodus... I'm gonna try this? Although I could also summon Kuhulam who uses mostly physical attacks, but I could also try this... I guess we're gonna find this out the hard way. Are Exodus's attacks considered magical? Or are they considered neither physical nor magical? Because that would be kind of interesting if they were neither. I know they're like gravity slash percentage based. You are using gravity well, but then again, your gambits don't really say um, to pay attention to palings. Immune, yep. Yeah, Zeromus' attacks are considered um, um, magical. That's not good. I just wasted my, my quickening bars there. I mean, at least you can suck up damage while Vaan just spams attacks. That's another possible use for Espers. Yeah, Vaan's doing quite a bit with combo attacks, and Zeromus can always just focus on healing. If he can actually get the Curage in fast enough. Yeah, as you can see, Espers are immune to silence. It makes sense they would be. Hmm. Me summoning an Esper actually helped here. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to dismiss you now. I think. Oh, it feels like a bit of a waste, though. Sky would keep your course. In Vessel of Sky, now make your way. Reaching this place, your worth proven. The path shall open. Does that mean we'll be given through ways untrodden, pass but one. Through ways then known, move unhindered. The vessel's way is now master to ascend. Like, it feels like it's a very uh, over-the-top way of saying this elevator will work once you get to the end of this dungeon, and then you can use it to skip to any previous area you want to. Ah, uh, here we go, Altar of Knowledge. Because I know that there is something, something very special a little bit later up, because we've dealt with the three Guardians. We have not, however, dealt with every boss in the Pharos. There are there are definitely more than just the three guardians. And okay, that purple thing is is gone. Oh, do we get the elevator now? Okay then. Your abilities are again your own, and by that I mean the minimap in the top right hand corner of the screen that I never cared about to begin with. <laughs> uh. 
yeah, it's it's kind of kind of silly. They even give you the option to sacrifice that because it's just not good to begin with, and you still have all of your other maps. Dias of Ascendance. Okay, we can only go up. Makes sense. It's called Dias of Ascendance. Now, is this going to take us to what I think it's going to take us to? Because if it is, I want to see what happens if you take, um, if you take Zerobus in there. This looks more wobbly than I would expect from uh, a, a well-made magical construct. That worries me. I would not like to be traveling on an elevator like this. And we are Reach of the Occult. And my Esper is still out. Wow, we're at 15. Are we gonna run out of these save slots before the end of the game? I guess we'll find out. That is gonna send us back to the beginning. Are there any notable chests here? Because I know that Ardor is eventually in the Pharos. No, there doesn't seem to be anything here. Though one of the chests in that uh, previous fight seems to have contained an elixir, which is very annoying. Because having elixirs is always um, good and nice clipping there, Zeromus. 